Hey guys. Uh, well, I am out here smoking a Perdomo Vintage, aged 12 years, matured in bourbon barrels. Uh, bale aged, barrel aged, handmade Nicaraguan cigar. Perdomo, if you know anything about cigars, will know they're pretty pretty big and uh, respected company. Um, I actually made a video uh, on this earlier and I'll show pictures of the cigar and its wrapper. Um, but it did not turn out great. And I'm uh, experimenting with using iPhone headphones for my microphone. All very exciting stuff. But uh, when speaking of the this cigar, I typically go for a darker cigar, more of a Maduro cigar. While darker doesn't always mean stronger, I kind of prefer the, the stronger cigars. And a lot of times that lines up. Uh, this is more of a mild to medium cigar. Um, and I'm actually not even sure how I got it. I, I think it, it might have been recommended uh, last time I was at the cigar shop. And then, um, and I, I respect his uh, opinion. And it turned out great because it's uh, quite quite good and quite relaxing. Uh, you know, most cigars um, that I've had, the best thing about it is just the relaxation. Um, it's not like a you smoke it and you get a buzz, um, but it's more like a subtle buzz um, that f feels contradictory because you're it's nicotine, um, which I thought would get you, you know, amped up, but it, for some reason it I don't know the science behind it, but it's very relaxing. Um, so man, yeah, just enjoy it. I've noticed that I've, in my short time with this passion, um, I have been gravitating, transitioning a bit from the stronger cigars, which I think uh, from what I'm told, um, a lot of people that first get into it gravitate towards the stronger cigars and, and uh, but then their palate gets a little bit more sophisticated and, uh, and then they gr maybe gravitate uh, to something more uh, mild. I'm not sure what that is, but I think if your palate is more sophisticated, uh, which mine may be, it may be happening to me, um, you start noticing extra accents uh, or noticing more subtle accents and it's maybe more fun to smoke a milder cigar um, to notice those accents uh, what am I talking about um, you know there's nut flavors coffee flavors uh, chocolate flavors uh, there's pepper um, there's a lot of uh, interesting notes much like wine um, that I think you start kind of becoming familiar with. With a more robust cigar or a uh, stronger cigar, I think it might be, after a while, it might be too much at once. And so the milder, I think, uh, enables you to appreciate it. Uh, those subtle notes because there's less of them um, all at once. So this is the... Now I'm about to get to the final third of this cigar. It's a much larger cigar. Um, and not typically my gauge either. Gauge is also something I'm um, still learning. I wish I could tell you what the gauge is of that. Someone else uh, may know. But it's a little bit on the, well, medium to larger side gauge. I like the uh, smaller gauges typically which would be either a half of that or maybe um, two thirds of that. But man, I really like this cigar. The other thing about it, um, and maybe worth mentioning in this video is when you smoke a cigar, uh, a lot of people, this is, some, this is actually something that's debated strangely, I don't know why, but uh, people will talk about the first third versus the second third versus the third third of the cigar meaning when you light it up Versus when you're in the middle or when you're where I'm at where I'm at right about now, which is the 
getting close to the final third of the cigar. I definitely notice a difference um, in taste, flavor, enjoyability, satisfaction. Uh, lighting up a cigar, I typically, it's something you gotta do. For me, it's something you gotta do to get to the second third. It's not something that, uh, I typically don't like the flavors right away. Sometimes I do. There's some Garcia and Garcia, my father's cigar uh, brand that is, uh, quite exceptional where I would argue that uh, it is quite satisfying right from the beginning. Uh, for this and most cigars that I smoke, uh, it's the second third and then the final third that I find it to be the most satisfying. Again, it's aged, it's the Perdomo, um, aged 12 years. Um, it was meant to be, it was created to be enjoyed with the scotch. I'm actually a scotch or a, a nice whiskey. I uh, am doing the opposite. Or a robust wine. I'm doing the opposite because it's a hot day. As you can see, I'm sweating. Um, and drinking a, uh, a tart uh, Argentinian Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so it does, that does not pair well. <laughs> doesn't take away from the cigar it's just what I want to drink right now um, all to say this is aged 12 years which I find uh, remarkable you know all premium cigars will be aged at the very least three years which is remarkable in itself the care it takes to maintain the fermentation and the uh, the quality of the tobacco just for your three-year cigar but then you have something like this which is aged 12 years before it was released. So this is actually probably, this was released four years ago. So this is a 16 year old cigar. Maybe it's good to talk about, so how do you maintain something that's 16 years old? A leaf for that matter. Well, you need to have a good humidor, um, which I now have, which I'm actually quite excited about and look at it and monitor it every day to make sure it is at the right humidity and the right temperature. Um, and maybe I'll show that uh, a little bit later. Maybe I'll put a picture up on this one. Uh, it is, uh, it came, it looked really nice, um, but it wasn't very effective. I noticed, you know, first thing you check is the seal and it didn't have a great seal. Uh, it had some air, uh, open spaces where air could easily get through. So I had to apply some, um, uh, let's call it sealant tape, because I don't remember exactly what it's called, where I lined the edges of the lid uh, with the sealant tape. And it's just, it's a beauty right now. And it feels even better because I did something that worked <laughs> uh, with it. So I'll show those pictures. But the uh, they say the typically, the rule of thumb, though, <clears throat> you can go lower or higher depending on your taste, but is to have the 70-70 rule, where you have uh, 70 degrees in the humidor and it's also 70% humidity. That's what mine is right now. Uh, that took a while. You gotta, you gotta season it right um, and do a number of things to get it ready. And my initial attempts, uh, was too dry. And then all of a sudden, then after I sealed it properly, but I threw in a bunch of humidifying packets and, um, and whatnot, it went too much. And actually, I think I ruined some cigar experiences because some of the nicer cigars I typically enjoy were harder to pull on. Um, hard, it was a harder draw. And I think it's cause they're too moist, but if a cigar is too, is uh, too moist, then it will go out often, and that's no fun. So honestly, I think my sweet spot is 68% humidity, which I'm trying to get it down. I've taken out all the uh, water uh, or humidifying packets and water, um, I don't know, retainers, I guess, you, if you will. I'm not sure what the name of them are so that it drops to 68 degrees. And then if it starts going below 60, excuse me, 68% humidity, if it goes below that, then I'll probably add water again and, and put in the uh, 
the water uh, retainer. But yeah, if it's too moist, and this is, strangely, that's what uh, the guy who makes these cigars, Perdomo, um, the son of the uh, originator of the cigar, that's how he does it. He, he prefers it 68 degrees. And uh, because he wants a cigar that, that lights up and stays lit. Um, and it does impact, you know, the draw and the flavor depending on how um, humidified it is. And so for me, I think that sweet spot is also 68 degrees, uh, excuse me, 68 uh, uh, percent humidity with uh, then maybe 70 degrees still. But I think uh, the idea is if it's 65 to 75, uh, whether uh, percentage of humidity versus uh, temperature degrees, um, anywhere in that that zone, I think you're, depending on what your tastes are, uh, is acceptable or considered, that's considered the spectrum. That's a nice cigar. Well, maybe you learned something. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. Um, but uh, if you have questions about cigars, I am quite voracious about reading about them now and um, watching uh, educational videos. Uh, so post comments and uh, or Google it. That might be more effective. Or chat GPT it. Even more effective. But if you want to leave comments here, uh, go for it. Um, and thanks for letting me test my new uh, headphones and smoke a cigar with you. Catch you later. Bye.